Alright, welcome back to more Let's Play Star Wars Nice Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords. So last time we finished Dantooine, we found Master Rook, we got our prestige class, we did a lot of interesting things, but we got a new party member. Disciple. Now I know I didn't speak to him at all last time or use him for that matter because Well What I'm about to tell you is something that applies to several companions in your party. I spoke to Disciple a little bit off screen to get the influence with him because his conversation is kind of boring. Kind of boring? Yes, kind of boring. Kind of boring. You. So I'm going to boil it down for a nutshell on you because I don't want to spend the first 20 minutes of a session, which is the first video, talking to companions. Basically, he used to be a student here on Dantooine. However, when all the Jedi left to the Mandalorian Wars, there were no masters left to train him and he was denied the path of the Jedi. So he forgot how to feel the Force. Oh no! So I've gotten enough influence with him. You can get all your influence with the Disciple just by talking to him. You don't have to do any outside events. And for the love of God, take off that ridiculous band. I hate it. I'm sorry, but I just hate it. So now we are going to turn Disciple into a Jedi. Yes? Is something wrong? I have questions. That is hard. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, you'll get this option after he tells you he's a student. And if your influence is high enough, which is not that hard, then he'll let you do it. I think you are right. It is time. I have watched you. You have become strong in the Force again. But that is not all. You have achieved a center in the chaos around us. I have felt it, my master. The one intended for me. Left to fight in the Mandalorian Wars. Now she has returned. And I ask her now if she will train me in the ways of the Force. Alrighty. The one who was to be my master was lost at Malachor V. I want you to teach me the ways of the Force. To become a Jedi Knight. What I meant to be. Then let us meditate. Let us kneel randomly in the middle of the floor. This will look kind of awkward to people passing by, but that doesn't matter. Feel the Force upon Nashada. Feel its currents, feel it flow, blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. And at last. Blah. Disciple has taken his first steps on the path of the Jedi Consular. His ability will grow as he travels. Now you can see, he has become a Jedi Consular. This is why I did not level him up until now, or use him. Get his tree injury up. He has gained all of these feats now. He already has two weapon fighting up to the point, which is good because I'm gonna have him be a double bladed lightsaber wielder. Uh, uh, you already. How does he have improved toughness already? Yeah, he comes with a lot of um, prerequisites, which are really nice. I'm gonna give you advanced Jedi defense, cure, and I'm gonna give you speed. What was that? Unarmed specialist and force sensitive. Excellent. No, not wisdom. You're not very wise, Mikal. You're not wise at all. Actually, no. He needs he needs more wisdom. Yeah, he does. Uh, what to do? What to do? Um, Stasis stun's a good one. Gonna give him master two weapon fighting, obviously. Night speed. Oh, he gets two powers. Excellent, because he's a consular. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, battle meditation is always useful. Uh, Stun void. Wisdom. Beats. Master toughness, because consulars do not have a lot of health at their disposal. Um, disabled droid. And last but not least, destroy droid. Oh, he gets a few more levels. Brilliant. I think this is probably the last one for him for now. Um, improve battle meditation. He's not level 18 yet, so he, I'm not level 18 yet. What am I talking about? All right, so now we're gonna give him a double bl Yeah, you'll see how I got so many lightsabers. I discovered an interesting glitch, which I'll make a separate video for later. It basically allows you to cut the conversation with Rook short so that he doesn't teach you the lightsaber form and he doesn't disappear, but he still gives you the lightsaber for talking to him. So I got all these li extra lightsabers by talking to him, just by talking to Rook. Uh, 
I'll give you the I'll give you the adrenaline the amplifier. I'll give you a uh, stealth. No. There's one of the response packages give you bonuses. Never mind. I think the response package gave you a bonus to stealth. And should I give him a robe? I should probably give him a robe. There you go. Mikal, the Jedi Consular. Uh, give him his regular clothing for now. I think it looks I think it looks cooler. One defense actually I don't even think it does. Yeah, it does actually, but that's beside the point. The reason I spoke to Macal outside is because what should I call it? When you go in, you trigger a lot. He has a lot more dialogue options than most characters. That's why I spoke to him a little bit off screen to cut some of it short. But as we progress through the planets, he becomes like your main. He and Kray are like the two that you'll talk to the most. I'm also going to talk to Visus a bit before we go on to the next planet. Just so you know. I think I need to, I don't need to talk to Atten yet. Not yet, I don't, but still. Not quite yet. We're almost there. How many more do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Okay, I don't know how you're talking to me from the other side of the ship, but uh, as many as will help us. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. Hey. No? Perhaps not. I am not blind. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. How do you know that? I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? fool dances in your shadow for your favor. The disciple, he worships you quietly. The alien obeys you. Even within the machines, there are echoes. Watch them carefully. See their patterns and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. Yeah, I've already used it quite a bit, actually, but still, you have a point. I will reflect upon this. Good, and then act upon it. It is a powerful tool to motivate others. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. What do you mean? Have you never asked yourself how Revan took the Republic and Jedi beneath him, how he made them his? Powerful presence. Ah, but to make officers turn on their own people. To bomb innocent worlds to make pacts. Strong influence, indeed. And where did these Sith teachings come from? And why did Revan embrace them so strongly? I thought they came from the Sith Empire. Oh, did they? No. Revan met no Sith Empire, yet he learned their teachings. Many have mistaken the soldiers beneath Revan, the machines that were constructed to be the Sith. They are wrong. The Sith is a belief. And what Revan formed was not an empire, but something else. Yet how he did it is curious. And I suspect the answer to that question is tied to another. How was Revan able to corrupt so many so quickly? You have ideas? Not a one. But we shall see where our journey takes us, I think. And see how many answers we come across, yes? Very well. What? Oh, I thought I was going to get light side points there. And, um, influence with Grey, it turns out I didn't. Oh well. We're gonna talk to Vesis for a bit, and then we're gonna talk to Bayader. 
my life for yours. Yeah, she's a very interesting character. I know we haven't spoken to her yet, but she's quite good. So, are you alright? I am able to serve. If we enter battle, I will fight and die alongside you. That's not what I asked. I... I have not heard that question in some time. My flesh is healed if that's the answer you seek. I noticed you have scars. I know. And I fear that others will see the mercy in your actions. And in my survival. And use it as a weapon to do you greater harm. How did you find me? I... felt you. Heard you through the Force. It was like a sound at the edge of hearing. And when I heard it, I found I could not ignore it. Cool. Forgive me, but before you go, I must ask. Why do you do this? Why do you seek to help me? Because I believe you can be saved. You must not do this. I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me. To help another is not weakness. So you say. But it is not something I have observed or seen. What do you mean? I remember little of my homeworld before I entered my master's service. It is not as it was. There is little left of such memories. Or the planet itself. What is the homeworld? It is not a subject which I have spoken of since its destruction. Why did your master destroy Qatar? The Jedi, the last council of the Jedi, came to our world to meet in secret. They hoped that perhaps among our people, they could achieve the clarity to see what was striking them from the darkness of the galaxy. They succeeded, but only in bringing him from the outer regions. And Qatar, with my kind, with the Jedi upon its surface, could no longer be ignored. And my people died, and the Jedi died. So he attacked it because the Jedi went there, basically. Yeah, this is the big cloaked guy with the mask. Darth Nihilus, that's his name. He cannot deny his hunger for long. And any gathering of Jedi is something he cannot long resist. And now that the Jedi are vanishing, I do not know what will happen. Perhaps he will grow strong enough to eradicate all life, merely with his presence. We're gonna to talk to Kray a little bit about this guy too, because you really need to understand who he is in order to appreciate the full magnitude of the story. And now we gain influence with her in a light side alignment shift. And now look at this. Look at this. Oh my god, she's light sided all of a sudden. My light. Talk to you a little more. Uh, who sent you? I serve my master. I am an emissary, a scout. My master was aware of a disturbance in the Force. There is little my master does not know. And that you eluded his sight for so long is significant. But I do not know why. Uh huh. Where is he? You cannot. His vessel roams the borders of known space, and even I do not know where he travels, until he calls for me. Even if I could lead you to my master, I cannot permit you to find him until you are ready. Ready? If I bring you before my master, untested, without your potential realized, then you will be lost to me, and I cannot allow that to happen. It would be as if one brought fire to a paradise valley, shattered a cavern of rare crystal, or blinded a painter. I see. I cannot. I will not. I would die first and gladly to preserve you now that I have found you. I cannot sacrifice what I have found. Yeah, a lot of their cryptic speak becomes clearer as you understand more about Nihilus. You will meet my master. It is inevitable. And when you stand before him, and realize what you face, you must be prepared. Until then, I must protect you, help you, until you are ready. Huh. There's a, a greatness in you. A greatness that does not stem from the Force. It stems from who you are. And if my master does not understand you, 
cannot see you, then perhaps there is hope for us all. How are you able to do it? There is much I see my master cannot. I fear it is because of my nature, the nature of my race. My people spend their lives seeing the galaxy, the energy streaming off stars, the growth of life, all things touched by the Force. I see. You can actually talk to her about seeing through the Force. I don't know if I have the influence to do it yet. Mine. I will answer what I can. Uh, how are you able to see? My people once had the power to perceive events, to see through the Force. That sight may manifest itself in many ways, and at times, I may affect the abilities of others to see as well. You sound as if the sight has lost you. My sight has been damaged. What I have taught you, it is not the full extent of the perceptions of my people. Huh. My master, when he showed me my world, showed it to me as it is. It hurt. And since that moment, it has been difficult to perceive the Force as I once did. But after traveling with you, I feel that perhaps there was a gift in it, hidden beneath the pain. Huh. Only when one suffers do certain truths become evident, both of the galaxy and of the self. And I feel you are an example of this. Hmm. Now leave. As you know, you have to ask. If you wish to know, perhaps it is possible to show another what my people see, what I see. First, you must close your eyes. The surface of the ship, its sights, will only be a distraction. Now, in your mind, reach out. Listen for my breathing. Do not focus on the sound, but the life behind it. Imagine its energy, its texture, in tandem with the breathing. There. It is not as difficult as I thought. You learn quickly. Haha. <laughs> Force sight. It will take effort to maintain such sight. But you now have that power. And with it, you can use it to see life around you in a different way. There you go. That's essentially the maximum stuff that we're gonna do with Lisa, basically, because she gives you this interesting little force power. Force sight. Essentially, you can see things through the force. You can see the alignment of your companions, obviously. If they glow blue, they're light-sided. If they glow red, they're dark-sided. If they are gray, then they are neutral. Like Kreia. Completely neutral. I need to ask her also about my uh, crystal and a few other things. Yes? Have you come with questions? Yeah, I know this video is a lot of talking. This is just gonna be like a giant little thing where I... A giant little... It's a giant little thing. A thing where I'm just catching up with a lot of the dialogue for the companions. Basically, that's what this video is. Uh-huh. That crystal is bonded to you. Most interesting. Huh. Your, is there something... I need to upgrade my lightsaber crystal. But now we're gonna... Hear a few... Actually, no. First thing we're gonna do... There's a lot of stuff we have to ask Kreia. And I mean a lot of stuff to ask Kreia. Which is why this video is probably gonna be longer than 20 minutes. In fact, I know it will be. Take out the Exile Crystal. Because we're going to, uh... Whatchamacallit. I'm gonna get it upgraded and then we're gonna talk to Kreia. Yes. That crystal is bonded to you. Through you, it acquires its character and strength. And through it, your power is enhanced. Let me focus on the crystal for a moment. There. Now it is fully in tune with you again. Is there something else you wish? Alright, uh... What do you know about Lisa's master? He, if he can truly be called a man any longer, is one of the dark lords that pursues you. I do not think he knows what you are. Not yet. He spared the Miraluka, and that may have been the last shred of feeling that exists within him. Keep his slave close to you. I suspect there was a reason he spared her. How is he no longer a man? One cannot have power of that magnitude that her master possesses and still think and perceive the universe as we do. 
as most of us do. I had hoped that you would not have to confront him, but her presence here has changed all that. You will have to meet him in battle. You must be prepared to sacrifice the Blinded One. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Hmm. How did he destroy her homeworld? It is a technique that is almost as old as the Sith themselves. It is a means of severing connections between life, the Force, and feeding upon the death it causes. It cannot be taught. It can only be gained through instinct, through experiencing its effects firsthand. And he used it to destroy the entire planet. Yes, and he fed upon its destruction. It will sustain him for a time. How does he have that kind of power then? I mean, it's just, it's freaky. This guy can rip entire planets to shreds with his bare hands. I mean, seriously, that's astounding. Power? Do you think so? You would be wrong. There is no strength in the hunger he possesses, and the will behind his power is a primal thing, and it devours him as he devours others. His mere presence kills all around him, slowly feeding him. He is already dead. It is simply a question of how many he kills before he falls. I see. Nothing is impossible with the Force. It is an energy that flows through all living things. And like energy, it may be harnessed, channeled, and consumed at times. It may even be a substance that can burn and ignite. Do not think of his power as one would a weapon, or one of your warships of the Republic. It is terrible, but it is still a subtle thing. The sect of assassins that chase you feed on the Force. What he does is simply the pinnacle of what they could achieve in time. And that is why they and their techniques must be wiped out. No one again must experience and learn what her master did. How are they able to drain the Force? As much as one may use the Force to bolster the wills and strengths of others, the reverse is possible, though not often used. Instead of sending one's will through connections in the Force, instead such connections are drawn upon, fed upon, and drained completely. But all life is touched by the Force. Then you understand how terrible such a power is, and why it must be ended. It is an empty road to the dark side, and by traveling it, the price is death before one's time. He is a breach in the Force, capable of consuming the lives of those around him. Sometimes the touch is slow, as it is with his crew. And how does he use this power? It is not something he can direct or focus, much like hunger itself. He is more of a hole in the Force than a living thing. Force sensitives and worlds rich in the Force draw him. The Miraluka world was one such place. That is why where the Jedi gather, Jedi will die. He will feel it, unless they mask their presence. But Katar called out as a beacon to him and he could not resist it. And he cares nothing for the Sith, or its teachings, or the Jedi. And when the Jedi are dead, he will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. There is no future in the empty galaxy he sees, and that is why he must be stopped. The breach must be sealed before his power grows beyond what even we can hope to stop. So that's Darth Nihilus in a nutshell. Yes? Have you come with questions? So now we're gonna do a little, a few, uh, force lessons with Kreia, basically. Very well. When this is attacked, she did something to my eyesight. She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. Okay. Feel this ship around you. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Hey, T3 has a stuck motivator. Now, stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. It's not fully fixed. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Now, listen deeper. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear. For in fear, 
lies death in. <laughs> I heard her thoughts. You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. But how did I do it? That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. Huh. Brilliant. And we're gonna do one more thing with Kreia. Yes? Have you come with questions? Very well. You can, we'll continue the listening lesson later, but not not quite, quite yet, because I want to get a few more people in the party, because it, it, it does have an impact. When I spoke of sight before, there is a similar handicap that tends to occur among those strong in the Force. They neglect their skills. Some believe they no longer need them. The greatest wielders of the Force are those that maintain some grounding to the more physical realities of the universe. Such as? Some wielders of the Force have mastered piloting, others the ability to fix and repair and build, from simple moisture vaporators to more complex machines such as droids and vehicles. One's ability to understand the human body and its ailments, for example, can make your powers within the Force more complete, more powerful, when you attempt to repair the cellular damage of another. And others have mastered the more subtle work of politics, persuasion, do not doubt that a galaxy may be conquered with words, a republic overthrown, and an empire made. When such skills are honed, one's abilities with the Force become that much stronger. My warning to you is this. Do not rely on your companions to compensate for your weaknesses in skill. There will be times they will not be there to help you when needed. What skill would you say is your greatest strength? Uh, repairing machines. And what skill would you say is your greatest weakness? Not being seen. Then my task before you is this. Take your greatest weakness, devote effort to it, strengthen it, and I will show you how it shall strengthen your power in the Force. Yeah, I don't think we'll be doing that, but still. As you learn and train and test yourself against the galaxy, all your skills have a chance to improve and grow as well. When you devote some of that training to your weakest skill... Alrighty. Now we're gonna, there are some questions and stuff I want to ask Kraya, but we'll do that in a little while. Uh, who else? We need to talk to Disciple a bit. Do we? Yes. Is something wrong? What are you doing? At times, I meditate. Simply close my eyes and listen. It is quite calming. I try to treasure these moments before the next crisis begins. Uh, alright. Of course. It would be my pleasure. <laughs> a one-time bonus to force power through, me through meditation. I try to treasure these moments before the next crisis begins. It's handy because you can instantly restore your force points if there's no enemies nearby, of course. That is hardly surprising. Uh, force bonding. A force bond? What do you mean? A, a lethal connection, essentially. I'm not sure I understand. Basically, if I die, she dies. If she gets totally screwed up, I get totally screwed up. Thinks for a moment silently. What? No. I thought I had heard mention of such connections in some of the holocrons, but I do not possess them. They are part of the holocrons that were taken from the Enclave. And where would those be? Interesting. <coughs> I do not know. I do not know who has taken them. If we were to find them, perhaps I could help you find the answers you need. Alrighty. So I just wanted to do that to get some info to them. I think we need to talk to Beadr a little bit as well. General? Need something? Uh, you don't have to call me General. Sorry. Yes, I can't get my head out of the past. Yep. I moved around for a couple years. Working as a starship mechanic got me from place to place. I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. Yeah, because you got knocked out so many times. Then you understand my restlessness? 
Though the war had ended, I couldn't find peace in anything. As long as I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. Yep. I'm sure you do. I decided I'd do something instructive. I wanted to make up for the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields, but there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic, and it sounded like something good. But Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out on my own, but I guess I can't fix everything myself. Nope, you suck. It's good to be working with you again, General. Something else I can help you with? Nope. Huh. I didn't want to talk about the war, but can I ask you something? No. Why did you decide to fight? There was a mistake. It wasn't really, but yeah, we'll, we'll say this for the hell of it. The war went poorly before Revan and the Jedi lent aid to the Republic. Many of us believed the Jedi to be cowards who were afraid to face the Mandalorian threat. I remembered when word of the Mandalorian attacks arrived on Iridonia. My people had colonies across the Outer Rim. Many of them were among the first systems to fall. Vengeance. Revenge. And to crush the Mandalorians. To send them back to wherever it was they came from. I did not join because I wanted to protect, though. I hated them. I wanted to destroy them. To give them the mercy they gave the people they conquered. I remember the thrill I felt when we fought them in battle. Victories were rare, but we celebrated every Mandalorian's death. Do you know how it felt? Uh, no. I couldn't do that. It was almost as though the battle took control of me. It's always on my mind now. I just needed to get that off my chest. Was there something you want? Uh, Tila situation. If the Republic would just rain, I'm gonna skip Bayadur's dialogue because well, it's not very interesting. Else I can... but it has to be said. That old thing. Hey, just kidding. Shut up, shut up. He helps me out with. He's also good for. Us. I've been think something else. I... Yeah, shut up. How'd you lose your arm? I got tired of it. I was only kidding. But at least it. Shut up, shut up, shut I... up, shut up. What are you doing? Just working on the ship. Whoever made these. Re... You know, I'm glad I found you again, General. What are you talking about? We were together at Malachor. I don't know if anyone else could understand. Why? You're getting philosophical on me? I'm here because you found me on Telos and I decided to come along for the ride. Really? Tired of me already? I was frustrated. Watching the Athorians getting pushed around by Zerka, I thought I could make a difference, but it was taken away from me. Guess if one planet was good enough for me, why not the galaxy? Uh huh. Sometimes there are things that can't be fixed. Oh my god, I'm up, I'm gone being, oh no. You just have to know what the circuit... It's all wires and switches to you. That's the way I see things. Was there something... Nope. Having you here has an effect on me, General. I never noticed it years ago. I think my mind was too occupied then. What do you mean? I feel calm. More in control. The anger is still there, but... I can feel it drifting away. The last years of my life have been defined by it. The Mandalorians, Zerka, and Revan. And above all else, myself. Ah, uh, yes, this will become clear later. Never, General. It had to be done. My hands destroyed the Mandalorians. I cannot be forgiven for that. You did what was necessary, as did I. Even if I did it out of hatred of the Mandalorians? Yep. That might be the truth, but I don't want to see it that way. You're too stubborn. Even if there isn't, I still feel like I need to do something to make up for it. Easy. You become a Jedi, and then... And then you can not get knocked down as much. Under your guidance, I feel like I could overcome my anger. Excellent! Vader. They cut Vader's training sequence out for some reason. I don't know why they cut out the little things that would have added better details to the game. But now, Bayadur is a Jedi Guardian. Huzzah! That's all the talking. Actually, no, we're gonna do... Oh, I don't know. I don't know quite what I'm doing yet, but... Uh, oh, dear, 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 dear. Yeah, just take Bayadur with us for now. We're just going outside again to Dantooine real quick, just so I can give him his lightsaber, get him all leveled up and stuff like that. 
I know this video hasn't been the most exciting thing because I, I haven't done a lot of commentary, but it it's a lot of... So I decided rather than spacing it out across the Let's Play and putting a lot of gaps in the videos, I'd just do all the talking that I really wanted to get done in one session. One little thing here. And the next session I'll continue on to Narshadal and get the planets going and really get rolling on the action and stuff like that. I know this is kind of boring. But I can't just do it off screen because it's important and then... I come back and all my party members are Jedi and then everything's like screwed up and it's like what the hell is going on. Jedi Guardian Bayadur. He loses a lot of his skill benefits now, that's the only problem with it. Constitution. See, he only gets one skill point now. That sucks. What? Oh. To level you manually, aren't I? Eh, that's a drag. Ah, uh, dear. Yeah, master toughness. Why not? Let me give you two powers. Yeah, Bayard or, um, can't wear robes or anything, so he I have to give him powers that aren't restricted by armor because he has to wear armor. Oh, fine. Just level standard then. I don't care. Um, I'm also gonna have him be a single hilt. So I'm not gonna give him dual wielding. I know, I make the Consular a dual wielder and the Guardian a single wielder. Shocking, isn't it? Uh, Master Jedi Defense. I don't think I have that yet. Actually, I think I do. Stasis. That's all we can give Bader for now, but that's okay. That's all he needs. Can you give him a lightsaber? A Sith battle suit, yeah, the irony. Yeah, it was. There you go. And Vader is now a Jedi. <laughs> All my party members are becoming Jedi. It's awesome. It's awesome. So I'm just gonna do a quick sweep through my companions one more time, just make sure I've got everything I need. Basically, turning your party members into Jedi, that's the biggest thing. Because there's a couple more party members that can become Jedi. But I won't uh, go into that quite yet, because we haven't unlocked them yet. <laughs> I know that it's been almost 40 minutes, this video. I'm sorry, guys, but still, it's, uh, it's just, uh, this is just, just like a one-time video, just to get all the talking done, all the party members' crap out of the way. That sort of, th that sort of stuff. The good stuff, you know. Well, check it again. It can't be anything else. Just check the damn connector. I don't trust the diagnostics any more than I trust you. Because I don't like droids. They break. In the head. Well, whatever you call that thing on your... head. Yeah, well, if I'm mean to you, it's because I care. Yeah, right. Do you need a hand? No, I don't. Go back to your training. I'll call you if I need someone useless. Is there some problem? I was only offering to help. Problem? No, no problem. Just wondering how long you're planning to stick around. For as long as she needs me, of course. How heroic of you. Well, she doesn't need you. In fact, we were doing just fine until you showed up. Actually, there are times when it seems you could use some help. Always with the details, aren't you? You can't fool me. You have some agenda spying on her, always keeping your eye on her. No, no, I don't. I, well, I simply admire her. She has many qualities worthy of respect. Yeah, and I noticed first. Get it? So cut it out. And another thing, stop being all noble around her in your big hero way. She sees right through your little act. She likes honest guys, not guys who run around being unselfish and heroic all the time. I thought she was the hero. <laughs> Oh, what's going on? See, I told you he's very um, influential in terms of dialogue. What are you doing? The more worlds we travel to, the more questions I have. It's not just the hardships of the people, but something more. Hmm. You are right. But there is something more at work here. Are you sure? The attacks on Qatar. Telos itself, the decay on Dantooine, something is wrong. 
but I cannot pinpoint what. It's like their connections have become sickened, damaged. Sometimes I feel like I almost understand and then it just slips away. Huh. Yes, another little foreshadowing tool that will become apparent later. And we're going to talk to Kraut one last time just to get a few things settled. Yes, have you come with questions? Uh, let's see. Answers. Ask. Uh... Have you never asked yourself... Oh, I already spoke to her about this. Ah... Uh. And where did... Shut up, shut up, shut up. I always spoke about this. Oh, did they? No, shut up, shut up, Many shut have mistaken. They are wrong. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up shut and up, I suspect skip, the... Skip, skip. Sorry. Ask. Uh, did you know Revan? Perhaps. I think it is fair to say that few did. Where did he come from? Revan had a mother and father, parents, ancestors, like all Jedi do. And when he awakened to his potential, I was there to see it. But where he was born, where he came from, I do not know. Some said that Revan was born in the outer regions, beyond the Rim, and that's what called to him during the Mandalorian Wars. And after, it was the call of home. What else? I know more. Huh. Ask. See. Yeah, she, um, she was Revan's, uh, teacher. So I'm trying to get her to uh, say. Uh, Fall. Ah, already you presume much. You were there at Malachor. Revan's choices were always his own. It was not teaching or circumstance or example. It was him. He was a Sith Lord. Is that what he was? Or was he always true to himself, no matter what personality he wore? And there is something that the Council may never understand. That perhaps Revan never fell. The difference between a fall and a sacrifice is sometimes difficult, but I feel that Revan understood that difference more than anyone knew. The galaxy would have fallen if Revan had not gone to war. Perhaps he became the Dark Lord out of necessity to prevent a greater evil. I do not believe the Jedi Council changed Revan as they claimed. They merely stripped away the surface and allowed the true self to emerge again, someone who was willing to wage war to save others. That is my belief, since I knew Revan from long ago, as a master knows their apprentice. You know him? You trained him? He came to me, yes. Both before and after. Before Revan knew himself. And after, in the times when Revan was coming to his own and learning he was more than he had been told. At one time, Revan was my Padawan in times past, long ago. But Revan, when he had learned all he could, had other masters. That fool Ja and other Jedi on other planets. He learned from each. But in the end, he turned back to me. When he realized there was nothing more to be learned from the Jedi except how one could leave them forever. And what was he like as a student? Revan was power. It was like staring into the heart of the Force. Even then, you could see the Jedi he would slay etched on his soul. Huh. You are different. When I look at you, it is like staring at the death of the Force. Oh, that's happy. So, we get lots of experience for that, and some influence with Kraya. Terrific, terrific, terrific. So, that's about it, really. I mean, I know this session wasn't very exciting. It was just like, I know this video hasn't been very exciting. It's just been a bunch of talking and dialogue. But we turned two members into Jedi, and that's really what I wanted to accomplish with this video. I just wanted to get all that out of the way. Because I'm, I don't have time, really, right now to record a full session because of the... Uh, I've got some stuff going on here at home here in about five minutes, so when I return I'll have a free moment probably and I'll do the next planet. So until then.